Well, why don't you start off with a little bit about uh, growing up here in the Marion area. Uh, you've been involved uh, in one way or another in the family business pretty much since uh, childhood. What are your first uh, memories of working with your father in, in the business? Well, that goes back a long way, as, as you realize, because uh, I was a, a product of growing up um, uh, during World War II. I was born in 1935, so I was in the heart of World War II in 41 and 45, and sugar uh, rationing and uh, all the other things that uh, were going on. But I do uh, recall uh, uh, all the times when uh, uh, we were uh, struggling in the, uh, before even the Pepsi business, when we had just uh, Orange Crush and some of our other products. And uh, my dad, as you know, started in the uh, poultry and egg business and was putting uh, uh, soft drinks on the back of those uh, poultry trucks going to different grocery stores. And that um, uh, then a gentleman came by and talked him into taking on the uh, Pepsi franchise just for a small area. And later it was expanded and, and uh, it kind of grew from that. But uh, I guess the uh, first experience that I recall was uh, I was uh, down on South Court Street in Marion, Illinois at our uh, original soft drink plant and um, I was uh, with my dad and uh, we were uh, uh, talking about uh, putting uh, forklift trucks on and because all the truck loading was by hand at that time and uh, we thought that that was quite a step in the progress of talking about using forklifts instead of a, a regular uh, hand loading of all the trucks. Your father was in that. Experience. Yeah. Uh, oh, I tell you. Emotional and financial both. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, that's second. Okay. Um, your father was always uh, interested in civic affairs here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm wondering what, as he, as you grew up and you worked with him in the business, what kind of values did he pass along to you? Well, you're right. He was mayor of Marion for uh, 12 years and city councilman before that and always involved in uh, civic affairs whether it was Rotary Club or whatever it happened to be and uh, that's the environment I uh, grew up in and just like I said uh, earlier that uh, this was a I'm a product of the World War II uh, growth age and um, I would go to the rallies with him where that uh, they were uh, trying to get sell war bonds they were trying to uh, get scrap collected uh, for the war effort. And uh, so I, I just, uh, my family was always very much instilled in, uh, in public service and in being involved. Um, I, I think that uh, we always talked a great deal about uh, being contributors and uh, being involved in society. And, and uh, you know, while we're here in life, it's a short amount of time. And uh, we need to do something and accomplish something for the good of uh, all of us. And uh, so I think that's what we tried to do. And, uh, and I've always thought of it that way. And, and I've always enjoyed public service uh, very much. Um, when, when you started in things, uh, I understand that you worked in just about every position in the company. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, was that something that your father yeah. wanted you to do? Or was it something you both agreed mm -hmm. on? Or? Well, it could have been he was just getting cheap labor at the time. <laughs> I'm not sure, <laughs> but uh, it uh, it was something that uh, I think both of us wanted to do, but especially I wanted to do uh, more than him. I uh, he, he kind of let uh, water seek its own level approach, and uh, as much as I wanted to get involved, he would let me, and uh, uh, he wouldn't discourage me. But uh, it was really left pretty much up to me and. Uh, and the curiosity, I just wanted to uh, learn and wanted to be involved, just like I was saying, on public service. I uh, always uh, wanted to just uh, see what I could do in this life. What, uh, what positions did you end up working in here in the company? I, I've heard everything from yeah. working yeah. the bottling line to Well, you know, that's, that's, that's true. I, I worked on the bottling line and spent a lot of time on it, enjoyed production. And, and then later on, I've even uh, run the plant a few times. and. Uh, I ran the, when I was in high school, I was running the night shift uh, at Pepsi in the summers when uh, 
And that was interesting because uh, I remember when the uh, minimum wage law went to uh, 75 cents an hour, and I went to Dad and I said, I just don't know how we're going to afford paying this kind of wages. And <laughs> he said, don't worry, son, we'll work it out. We've seen it before. And uh, so uh, you do overcome those problems, and things sure have changed because uh, there's nobody around here these days that makes minimum wage, I'll assure you. What kind of business philosophy uh, did you develop over the years? This, mm -hmm. this has come from being a very small operation to being one of the largest bottlers in the country. Mm -hmm. it's gone. Yes. Well, in business, I think it's important to uh, pay attention to details. I think it's important to uh, build character within the organization. Uh, I think it starts uh, at the very top and works through uh, an organization. And uh, you have to insist on yourself uh, doing things correctly every day because a lot of things uh, uh, hit our desk and uh, a lot of phone calls and a lot of commitments. And uh, you have to make sure that uh, you always do it correctly. And that filters down in your organization. And, and if you, uh, so you need to keep a strong character. And uh, I think it's uh, just uh, the basis of building an organization uh, is uh, the character of the company. Did your time in the Marine Corps have any influence on that too? I think that uh, time in the Marine Corps was excellent uh, training and uh, you know just like I said earlier we were always raised to uh, uh, participate and serve your country and um, it was a great experience uh, being in the Marine Corps and as you know my son served in the Marine Corps also and it's just been important uh, for us to uh, be uh, participants in, in this game. And uh, the Marine Corps is a great organization, and uh, it's one of those experiences of life that I'm glad I did it, but I sure wouldn't want to do it again. <laughs> Leave it for the younger guys. That's right, absolutely. Um, today, as you, as you look at uh, your business enterprise, how large is it? Uh, it's in, what, five different states now? Yes, we're uh, five states, and then we've invested in another operation that's in a sixth state. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've had a lot of acquisitions, uh, probably 40 acquisitions in the last uh, 30 years. And we have grown, and uh, it's been a step at a time. And uh, it's, I think, a good way to, to build a business is a step at a time because uh, uh, you uh, buying a business and borrowing the money and, uh, and then later on paying for it, are the uh, easier steps of the whole operation, running them correctly, uh, training the people, and building the staff to, to give the kind of service that you want to give and take care of your customers properly is the hard part. How, how has the business changed over the years? You, you've had a unique mm -hmm. opportunity to watch mm -hmm. these small mm -hmm. companies, and they're back in the day, I'm sure, there were dozens of independent bottlers around yes. this area. Yes. Now to come up to uh, point where it enters into the corporate landscape, it's a global mm -hmm. economy you're dealing with? Yes. Well, it's uh, changed enormously, <clears throat> excuse me, but you're still dealing with people, uh, customers and uh, uh, employees, and um, uh, so that part has not changed, and you uh, need to very much keep a close relationship with both your customers and your employees. Uh, the rest of it has changed uh, totally. Uh, the uh, automation, uh, the capital that it takes to run a business, the capital it takes to get in a business is unbelievable these days. And that's why it's so very hard uh, to even uh, a small business to get started. Uh, the enormous amount of capital and also the enormous amount of complexities of uh, running a business, whether it's the uh, legal aspects, uh, the tax aspects, and uh, it's much more complicated. And it's pretty easy for me because I actually grew up as it was growing not only the business, but um, the laws were growing and the, uh, the, uh, the technology was growing. So uh, I, I kind of grew with it and through it. Uh, but for somebody to go into it today, it, it really is uh, extremely complicated. When did you first get interested in education issues? 
Well, I was um, um, always appreciative of the value of uh, education because I, I believe extremely uh, that opportunity is something that we need to give all our citizens. And so uh, when I was, uh, uh, it was mentioned to me that uh, of the community college legislation that had passed in Illinois uh, back in the 67, I believe, 66 or 7, and um, I started uh, becoming involved in uh, seeing that that legislation was passed. And um, my friend, uh, Senator Paul Simon, uh, was one of the sponsors of that legislation. Uh, and it was a great move on his part and still appreciated. And um, uh, then I became um, uh, I, uh, available for the board of John A. Logan when that was formed, that district, because districts were formed through the whole state. And I became uh, one of the original board members of John A. Logan Community College. And um, the more I became involved, I could see what great opportunity it gives uh, to people to better themselves and do the things that they, they want to do. The uh, community college system for many people is the first foot in the door for so many families to become uh, college educated. It's basically transformed the state of Illinois in a yeah. lot of ways. I, I think it's one of the major assets that the state has because the Illinois community college system is the uh, finest uh, community college system in the nation and it gives our citizens such an opportunity at a reasonable cost and they still can stay at home and and keep all their costs in line not only the tuition cost but housing and other costs and uh, even for ongoing education it has been so wonderful because you can still hold a job and uh, and go to uh, further your education whatever it is technical uh, or whatever or if in working with the universities, the community colleges have some great university courses that are put on at the community college by the universities like SIU is very active uh, and Southern, Southern Illinois University has done an outstanding job of uh, working with the community college system and putting on uh, more advanced programs. Well you look at how through organizations like the Collegiate Common Market and yes. the, the, uh, the ones that uh, work with each other like that you can take an issue like nursing care or mm -hmm. automotive technology and make sure that the programs are getting out to the areas where they need them. Absolutely. Uh, and um, articulation has uh, certainly uh, been an important uh, project that I uh, worked on for a long time. Uh, uh, I'll never forget when I was on the Board of Higher Education uh, that uh, they did a study on articulation of transfer of credits from community colleges to universities and back and forth. And, and even uh, any other direction to other community colleges and other uh, institutions in Illinois. And um, it was interesting after they had studied it, uh, they said they'd studied it I think for 28 years or something uh, like that, and uh, it was recommended that it needed further study. And uh, needless to say, uh, I, I got a little concerned and excited and, uh, and maybe a little too vocal. and. Uh, so uh, a lot of us got together and uh, we were able to move articulation along and, and make it progress because it's, it's not fair to the students, it's not fair to the taxpayers, uh, because remember the taxpayers have invested heavily in the education of all the students in Illinois in public education or private education. They invest heavily and it's not fair to them uh, and the student also not to be able to transfer those credits back and forth and maybe under encouragement of legislation we were able to uh, uh, get articulation moving and to the extent it is today it's still not perfect but it's come a long way uh, in the last few years. But it was a huge challenge because you're talking about in the case of community colleges dozens of them uh, nearly a, over a dozen senior higher institutions uh, colleges and universities and hundreds if not thousands of different courses. Yes, but all these courses are approved by the uh, Board of Higher Education. Uh, uh, supposedly they're of uh, equal or uh, great standards out there and uh, it is a great challenge but the educators have to get together and reach a consensus and um, of course what I suggested that if they didn't uh, that uh, we were going to pass legislation to force it 
and uh, unfortunately we didn't want to do that and didn't have to do that. Uh, so uh, we have made some good inroads, but uh, it's not quite done yet, but it, uh, they're making good uh, progress. Well, and, that, and all of that happened about the same time I was going through the community college system, and mm -hmm. it paid off in the long run. <laughs> yeah, well, it good it, it, because uh, it was to your benefit as a student, and it was your to you the taxpayers' benefit, and everybody wins. But uh, um, we we can't operate education in a vacuum, um, and um, people just can't be forced to uh, to go to a campus. Uh, when it doesn't fit their lifestyle because we have to make it available where they can have the opportunities to improve their life if they have the motivation to do so. Now, if they don't have the motivation to do so, there's nothing anybody can do about that. But we do have the obligation to make it available at a reasonable expense. And the other thing, too, about community colleges that strikes me is not only is it a great place to get your foot in the door for higher education, but they become regional centers for economic development, for a wide variety of cultural events and activities and things. They're, they're really oases, if you will, in a lot of the rural parts of the state. Mm -hmm. a absolutely. Uh, as you know, I was chairman of the Illinois Community College System for 10 years, and uh, I believe strongly in the first word of community colleges. I think community is a very big word uh, to bring those communities together and provide resources that just a part of those communities could not afford. And um, I, so the word community college, I think, is a great word. Uh, I don't think much of the word junior college because I sure think junior has grown up. And, and it is a community college and needs to be treated as such. Um, obviously, there was the, uh, the Community College Act that you worked on and, and helped get that, uh, get that through. The, uh, as this system matured, uh, we saw an explosive growth in these things. Uh, was that partly driven by the economy, partly driven by the, uh, you know, a new philosophy towards delivering education mm -hmm. to uh, people? I think a combination. Uh, there's no question the economy, um, when the economy is bad, uh, that people uh, do have a tendency to go back and they have, sometimes they have the time, too much time. Uh, to fall back and take courses that they've wanted to do. But I think uh, the availability of the courses, I think that uh, the community colleges have done an, a nice job of making courses available evenings, um, Saturdays, uh, Friday afternoons, times that people can work in their schedule. And I certainly encourage all of higher education to do the same because uh, it's like any other product where we're talking Pepsi-Cola or what it is, uh, we certainly need to make the product available when the customer wants the product. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some other things too, of course, many things that happened uh, on your watch with uh, the community college uh, board and system. Uh, you uh, instituted a, I mean, a uniform financial reporting system for budget development. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I would think that uh, your, your business sense, mm -hmm. your acumen mm -hmm. helped, uh, helped in that. Well, I, I think it's extremely important that we have great credibility uh, with the public, uh, the voters, the legislators, and the governor's office. And uh, what we did is put a standardized uh, accounting system in the community college system and uh, where that uh, anyone, it's on the internet, anyone can pull up and compare any of the community colleges by line item of what they're spending, not only in total dollars, but by headcount. And uh, so you have the comparison, but then it's up to the local board because I, I believe strongly that the way the community college system is structured in Illinois with strong local boards is the way it should be. And if the local board wants to put more money into a line item for a good reason that they have and the community college next door does not, that does not mean one is good and the other is bad but they want to, it shows where they want to put their emphasis and and I think that is good but I think we have to open up all this to the public and have good public ask access to build the credibility uh, that we need to build and I would like to see the whole in public higher education of the universities I'd like to see a similar system be very interesting to see that and how that would work
work in Illinois with the way that everything is structured. It certainly would. And there's still time to work on that one. <laughs> uh, there's always work to be done. There sure is. There sure is. I want to ask you also about another uh, another aspect, the leadership and core value initiative. What was your, what was your thinking on that and how, uh, how that would help people, and help the areas these places serve? Well, on uh, leadership and core value, I think in today's society we have our challenges. And um, needless to say, we're all of different political leanings, so we, it's hard to uh, agree. But I, I think that we can basically agree on a few solid values like uh, honesty and integrity. And uh, what we did in structure that, uh, we asked the local colleges in the state of Illinois to uh, ask their students, their faculty, uh, their civil servants, to all participate and come up with what they would envision would be good, strong values to encourage in their institution. So we started at the uh, state level with very few uh, guidelines. Just we would like to approach uh, honesty and integrity. But mainly they took it from there and started talking about some of the basic uh, values and uh, and how to approach it and how to encourage it. Uh, it has been a very successful uh, uh, project, and uh, I guess I'm surprised that we didn't have more opposition, any opposition. To my knowledge, we did not run into. Uh, everybody reached total agreement that uh, there are some basic values out there that should be uh, talked about. It's interesting. I've heard Glenn Pichard talk about the idea of a, a local leadership academy to uh, try to grow new leaders here in southern Illinois and, uh, and to keep our young people in this area, keep them from moving on out, mm -hmm. making this a better mm -hmm. area to live in. Yeah, well, I think that's an excellent suggestion, too, uh, because uh, one of the problems in southern Illinois is that uh, we uh, do not participate a as an area enough in the different committees and state government, etc. One of it's the geographic location. It's so hard to get to Springfield from here. It's hard to get to Chicago from here. And transportation is one of the problems. But uh, we, uh, as an area, have to be uh, uh, more involved in what's going on in, with the state of Illinois in the committees and other leadership roles because uh, uh, we don't want them to forget that uh, Illinois has a great asset in southern Illinois and Southern Illinois needs to be a, a major player in the state. Yeah, we've got to keep after that because of the way that the districts keep moving northward because of population. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, if we're going to grow and, and be the area that we can be with the opportunity we have, we have to show some leadership to do that. Um, I want to talk also about uh, uh, community colleges. That's not the only place that you've given your, uh, your leadership and your You've made philanthropic gifts to uh, universities. Uh, what are some of the things that, that you feel most strongly about in, in, in terms of your involvement with, uh, let's say, uh, SIU and other universities in the state? Well, uh, I just feel very strongly in general about education, especially higher education, and the impact it can have on society. And um, fortunately, with six kids, uh, uh, they've decided to go to school different places, but all within the general area. And uh, and automatically that uh, makes us have a lot of interest in Southern Illinois University and Southeast Missouri University and University of Tennessee at Martin and uh, Eastern Illinois University. And uh, so uh, it's, it's not only a personal desire, but uh, as the families uh, got involved in it, it uh, was a natural evolution too. As you look back over your, your public life and your business life, what's given you the most sense of personal satisfaction? Well, uh, the first thing is my family. Is uh, I think the most important thing that we can do in our lives is still uh, raise a, a family and a family unit uh, that... Um, has good ethics and uh, contributes to society in a positive manner and that's I think our number one job and uh, all the rest come way down the list uh, business and uh, public service compared to family uh, 
we've got to do that, and uh, and I'm more proud of that than anything. That uh, our six kids and and shortly 15 grandchildren and one great grandchild, and uh, I'm very proud of them. Um, you've still got uh, a long road ahead of you. A lot of things that I'm sure you mm -hmm. find interesting uh, mm -hmm. uh, still to be done, work to be done. Mm -hmm. Is there a, is there a challenge that you see on the horizon that you want to get involved with and uh, uh, devote more time to it? Well, I uh, want to spend uh, some time uh, with my wife, who's uh, having a few health problems uh, with ovarian cancer, and uh, that is a, a major priority uh, for me. But the other day when I saw senior President Bush uh, uh, do a parachute jump at 80 years old, it uh, renewed that uh, there is some life left here and uh, some things to accomplish. and. Uh, I don't expect to uh, be uh, jumping from an airplane or even pushed out of an airplane <laughs> at 80 years old, uh, but uh, that certainly is, uh, there's some things out there, uh, uh, not only the personal nature, but also business and uh, public service that I'd like to accomplish. Mm -hmm. um, one, one final question. Um, when, you, uh, when you learned that uh, you were being nominated as a Lincoln Laureate, um, what was your reaction to that? Well, I think the first reaction was uh, one of uh, shock, and the second reaction was uh, uh, very uh, humble and appreciative because uh, there's been some outstanding citizens of Illinois that have been uh, so honored, and to be uh, recognized for that from from being at this from this area. And remember, uh, we're we're just a soft drink bottler in Marion, Illinois. I've lived my whole life in Marion, Illinois. And we've been married 45 years, and um, you know we want to stay in Southern Illinois, and we're not going anyplace. But you know my business is just uh, selling soft drinks. It's uh, not anything that's uh, space science. But but I'm very proud of the, still of the job we have done. So I was very humbled by the experience, uh, but very appreciative because uh, uh, to be honored uh, like that for myself and my family. Uh, was quite a privilege, and I very much appreciate it. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about or touched upon that uh, you want to uh, make sure that we get on the record? Well, I, I don't think so. I think you've done a wonderful job with it, and uh, uh, but uh, I, I can't tell you enough of uh, how much that uh, Southern Illinois and Southern Illinois University and uh, uh, the opportunities that I have had in public service, how rewarding that's been for me and my family. And uh, uh, we've enjoyed that and gained much from that uh, in many ways by the great people that we've dealt with and all that we have learned. And um, I, I would always encourage uh, people to get involved because uh, you, you gain a lot from it personally.